The next item on our agenda with Mr. Michael is the blueprint update. Hey, good afternoon, Ms. Cousins, Dr. Curry, and members of the board. My name is Kevin Michael, and I'm here as the implementation coordinator to provide an update on the blueprint for Maryland's future. We will begin today's update with the review of uh, the changes in the blueprint law that resulted from recent legislative session. You will recall from last month that House Bill 1450 was originally proposed to extend the deadlines for the development and submission of implementation plans and the timeline for implementing the college and career readiness support pathway. However, the scope of the bill was amended during legislative session, and it now addresses local funding for FY23 and the process for releasing FY23 blueprint funds from the state. So specifically, House Bill 1450 was amended to, to prevent any reduction in local funding regardless of MOE calculations. It was also amended to clarify that the release of blueprint funds from the state will be contingent on the local school system's timely submission of a local implementation plan that satisfies AIB expectations. And finally, as expected, the implementation of the college and career readiness support pathway was moved from school year 22-23 to school year 23-24. House Bill 1450 passed both chambers and was forwarded to the governor. On the next slide, uh, this is with regards to the timeline for the blueprint plan implementation. House Bill 1450, as we expected, extends the deadline for MSDE to develop implementation plan evaluation criteria from April 1st, 2022 to September 1st, 2022. It also extends the deadline for the Accountability and Implementation Board to develop its comprehensive implementation plan from February 15, 2022 to December 1, 2022. Now, we do expect that the AIB will release a draft of its comprehensive implementation plan in October prior to the final draft being released in December. And finally, House Bill 1450 extends the deadline for school systems to develop and submit local implementation plans from June 15, 2022 to March 15, 2023, meaning Calvert County would need to submit its plan by that March 15, 2023 deadline. Can I ask a question about the delays? So when it says the deadline for AIB to develop their, the state comprehensive implementation and, and well, the MSDE evaluation, that, that's okay, but does this mean that the deadlines for things like the $60,000 starting salary for teachers and the, uh, the other mm -hmm. things that dollar values are tied to, that could extend as well? What the Accountability and Implementation Board has said is that they are going to be doing a deep dive of the law as they develop their comprehensive implementation plan. And during that deep dive, they will take a look and identify any of those embedded deadlines that may need to be adjusted and would propose those adjustments during the next legislative session in 2023. The next session, okay. They have not committed to any mention of any specific deadline. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh, the next slide is actually a follow-up to Ms. Cousins' question from last month uh, regarding a bonus for educational support employees. While it's not a part of the blueprint legislation, House Bill 1349 was introduced to provide a $500 bonus to each non-certificated education support professional in fiscal year 24. Uh, the bill requires that the local school systems report the number of such employees to MSDE so that funds can be properly budgeted in FY24. However, in addition to that, the governor has allocated funding via a supplemental budget to provide a similar $500 bonus for non-certificated education so support professionals uh, next year in fiscal year 23 as well. So um, uh, I hope that provides some additional information in response to that question. It does, thank you. You're welcome. 
And finally, House Bill 633, you may recall, was proposed to increase the composition of the Accountability and Implementation Board from seven members to 11 members. Uh, that was, the purpose of that was to ensure geographic representation from across the state. Uh, the bill did not make it out of committee and no further action was taken. As we move to the next portion of today's update, I'd like to introduce Ms. Jackie Jacobs, Director of System Performance and Instruction. Ms. Jacobs serves as a facilitator for our Early Childhood Work Group, and she'll be presenting information about this policy area. Ms. Jacobs. Thank you, Mr. Michael. Good afternoon, President Claggett, Dr. Curry, members of the board. I am Jackie Jacobs, Director of Instructional and System Performance. Uh, what I'd like to share with you today is around Policy Area 1 and Early Childhood. Policy Area 1 focuses on investing in high-quality early childhood education and care. It specifically targets for a significant expansion of full-day pre-kindergarten to be free for all low-income three- and four-year-olds. The expansion would take place over a period of years, starting with four-year-olds and moving to three-year-olds. It would give top priority to families and students living in the greatest poverty, both in terms of access and quality. The blueprint looks to partner this expansion of pre-kindergarten through the combined efforts of the public school system and private providers, with an overall outcome of all children having the opportunity to begin kindergarten ready to learn. The chart on this screen shows our current pre-kindergarten programs listed north to south. Currently, we have three full-day pre-kindergarten programs and 17 half-day programs for a total of 400 slots. Also shown on the chart, there are eight half-day programs offered through our Head Start grant. Some of our students in our half-day program receive a full-day experience by participating in Head Start programming during the other half of their day. For next school year, we are looking to move the half-day programs to full-day programs at Beach Elementary School and Patuxent Appeal Campus. The blueprint allows the opportunity to apply for support funding of our full-day programs. There are specific prerequisites of the grant that must be met in order to be able to apply for that funding. The only location that met the prerequisites was Patuxent Appeal Campus. Therefore, we have applied for the expansion grant to support the transition of these two classrooms. The blueprint will require us to shift in how we identify and enroll students in full-day pre-kindergarten programs. Currently, Calvert County Public Schools determines eligibility for placement in pre-kindergarten using categories. Category one includes all students who in, whose income is at or below 185% of the federal poverty guidelines. Students in households where English is not the primary language spoken, and students who have been identified as having a disability. Once our slots have been filled based on students who meet the Category 1 standards, then Calvert County looks to provide open enrollment to fill any remaining slots. The blueprint will require a shift in using a tiered system to identify eligibility for enrollment in full-day pre-kindergarten programs. Tier 1 are children who are 3 or 4 years old whose family income is less than or equal to 300% of the federal poverty level. Tier two means a child who is four years old, whose family income is more than 300%, but not more than 600% of the federal poverty level. And a tier three child would represent a child who is four years old, whose family income is more than 600% of the federal poverty level. The blueprint will require the development of a sliding scale for payments for families that fall into tier two or tier three categories. The blueprint funding each year is based on the total September 30th full day enrollment count for children from families that fall in the tier one category. Local funds would be needed if Calvert County expands and offers pre-kindergarten to families in tier two or tier three. And again, this is about the full day program, not the half day programs that we currently have. In addition to the income eligibility shared in the previous slide, the blueprint does share 
uh, priorities for expanding full day pre kindergarten slots to students with disabilities, regardless of their income, homeless youth, and children from homes in which English is not the primary spoken language. This is aligned with our current practice for placement for children in our current pre kindergarten programs. The blueprint requires all full day pre kindergarten programs to meet the following requirements by school year 2025 2026 a staff to student ratio of one staff for every 10 students, a maximum class size of 20, a Maryland early child certificated teacher, one instructional assistant that either has a child development associate certificate or CDA or an associate's degree that is inclusive of students with disabilities to ensure access to full participation in all programs and opportunities, enrollment based on income tiers, and accredited through the Maryland Excels program. This is a requirement of both public and private providers who select to apply for the grant and receive funding through the blueprint. There are two areas that will have the biggest impact on Calvert County Public Schools. The first is the requirement of instructional assistance to have either a child development associate certificate or an associate's degree. We are beginning with an audit of our current IAs and determining the best way to support our current staff in meeting this requirement. The second is the accreditation through the Maryland Excels program. Currently, Patuxent Appeal Campus has gone through the accreditation program through Maryland Excels and Calvert Elementary is currently in the process. As stated prior, prior pro private providers that apply for the blueprint grant to receive funding must also meet these same requirements. And there's an additional requirement for private providers that could be a challenge moving forward. And that is that staff who, who private providers who are approved for the grant, um, their instructional staff, salaries and benefits have to be comparable to the salaries and benefits of instructional staff employed by Calvert County Public Schools. Any private provider that is awarded the grant will have an MOU with Calvert County Public Schools to include collaboration and professional development and support and implementation. And finally, I wanted to end with a partial timeline for implementation of policy area one. The first is for next school year that we would begin to enroll tier one, three or four year olds um, and to increase that enrollment annually into full day programs. That private providers would account for 30% of the full day slots and increase by 5% each year. We do know that this is one area of the timeline that we will not meet and this is one area of the timeline that many counties in the state of Maryland will not meet because it will be dependent on whether or not the private providers apply for the grant. It is a closed grant. We don't know who has applied, but we will know, we're hoping by May 11th, who has applied and who has been approved for the grant. Uh, there is a waiver process for this piece of the, um, of the timeline. By 2425, we could begin to enroll tier two children if we choose and if space is allowed or available. In 2526, uh, full day pre kindergarten programs must meet staffing and Maryland Excel's requirements, as I showed in the prior slide. And by 2627, they are looking that private providers account for 50% of the full day slots. So as I shared in the beginning, this would be a combined effort with the public school system and private providers. And at this time, we wanted to see if you had any questions about policy area one. Just for clarification, um, non-certified Understand. What is non certified non certificate for the five hundred dollar bonus? Yes, that would be what we would call our educational support employees here. So our instructional assistants, our secretaries, our um, uh, building service workers, all of those folks would be non certificated educational support professionals. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So you said that there are 400 slots currently? 
Yes, currently with our half day and full day programs. And, and what is, that's at CCPS. Correct. Do we know how many slots there are with the private providers? So we do know that um, we have currently in the county 129 licensed child care um, providers, uh, 81 are home care providers, and 48 are centers. Now, for them to be part of this, they do have to apply for the grant and be approved, so they have to meet all of those same requirements we do. So I have to imagine that then they, they have uh, hundreds and hundreds of slots. If there's 129, in other words, how many children do they serve? So in any pre-kindergarten program, there can be no more than 20 students in a classroom, and that is with one teacher who is Maryland certificated in early childhood and one instructional assistant, according to the blueprint, must also have their CDA or an associate's degree. So you're looking at um, most child care providers have one classroom that is a pre-K classroom. They may have two, but, um, and that is if they apply for the grant. Oh, I thought that some of the larger ones had more classrooms um, than that. Oh. They may, but um, the ones that I've seen have one or two for a pre-kindergarten. They have additional classrooms for like two years old, two year olds, three year olds, and then their pre-K classroom. But just to get the 30% requirement um, that we might probably would miss, you said, um, that means that, does that mean that they need to add, you know, extend the space available at their, in their buildings? It would depend if they would open up their pre-K classroom to for this grant, which means that they would have to accept only income eligible students that fall to this um, requirement. Right. So if they meet all of those requirements, mm -hmm. whether or not they can open up another room or use a current room that they have, those are the things that we're also looking at how we are able to provide that. And when we think about the number of slots, we are thinking about when we, we have to be able to determine, and that's one of the things that we're looking at, is how many three and four year olds are in Calvert County that would meet the 300% of the poverty level. So yeah. what is that number? Yeah. And we have to be able to provide them um, the option of going to full day pre-K. Which, you know, if you meet the requirements, it sounds like it's a, it's a good idea for families. Absolutely. Yeah. And currently right now, um, when we look at our current half day programs um, and we look at category one, we're looking at 185% of the poverty level. And this expands out when you do the full day pre-K through the blueprint. Right. I might add that Suchita Warner sits on this policy area group too, because we don't know at some point with the, the requirement of, of increasing our numbers to full day slots, at some point it may mirror what happened when we moved to full day kindergarten. It's too soon to tell, but we do have Ms. Warner on that group uh, so that she's fully informed. This has definitely has a capital perspective to it and you know, not just us, but potentially the, the providers. So your, the work group, does it have the private providers uh, on? Um, we do not at this time. We have a group that includes our um, instructional supervisors, our school-based administrators, um, some of our teacher specialists that really uh, that focus on um, early childhood and pre-K, so that we can have a better understanding of this. Um, our uh, supervisor of state and federal grants meets with our private providers. Um, and has met with them to share the information and then it is up to the private provider who would want to apply. Another private provider that is also part of our grants is the Head Start program. Um, and so she is also working with our Head Start to see what would, um, how could we move from half day programs to full day programs within the Head Start grant world and they would account for part of the private providers. Thank you. Sorry, I was, was so I know I was probably <laughs> stepping on toes there. <laughs> Sorry. 
You good? Any additional questions? Thank you for the report. Yes, if the board's okay with this format, we would like to be able to feature a particular policy area every month. Okay, thank you. Thank you, works with everyone, thank you. Thank you.